the sum to infinity of a geometric series is 6 and the sum to infinity of the squares of the terms of the series is 6. 3.1.1 write down the second term of the series of squares in terms of e and r. The second term of the series will be given by e multiplied by r to the power 2 minus 1. So t2 is equal to e multiplied by r. But we're looking for the second term of the series of squares. All the terms are getting squared. So t2 squared will be equals to a r squared. This is just equals to a squared multiplied by r squared. So this is the second term of the series of squares in terms of a and r. Let's look at 3.1.2. Calculate the values of a and r. This equation is for six marks, by the way. The sum to infinity of a geometric series is a divided by 1 minus r. We are told that the sum to infinity is 6. So we have 6 being equals to a divided by 1 minus r. We want to find the value of a and the value of r. Let's cross multiply. If we do that, we're going to get a being equals to 6 minus 6r. We have two variables, a and r. We need at least another equation. So we can let this be our equation 1. And then another information we have. We are told that the sum to infinity of the squares of the terms of the series is 6. The sum to infinity, let's just put 2 here. To show that it is the sum to infinity of the squares of the terms of the series. But what you need to realize is that instead of having a, if we are squaring all the terms, then the first term will be a squared divided by 1 minus. Instead of r, we're going to have r squared. This makes sense if you look at the second term in 3.1.1. I think 3.1.1 is setting us up to be able to answer 3.1.2 to make that realization. We know that the sum is 6 and this is equals to a squared divided by 1 minus r squared. If we cross multiply, we're going to get a squared being equals to 6 minus 6r squared. We can let this be our equation 2. What we want to do here is to substitute equation 1 into equation 2. In place of a, we are replacing it with 6 minus 6r. So we're going to have 6 minus 6r squared being equals to 6 minus 6r squared. So what is 6 minus 6r squared? 6 multiplied by 6, that is 36. 6 multiplied by minus 6r, that is minus 36r. You multiply that by 2, you get minus 72r. And then minus 6r multiplied by minus 6r, we're going to get plus 36r squared. This is equals to 6 minus 6r squared. Let's take 6 to the left-hand side. We're going to get 30 minus 72r. And then 36r squared plus 6r squared, that will be plus 42 r squared being equals to 0. We can write this nicely and get 42 r squared. This is minus 72 r and not just minus 72. And then minus 72 r plus 30 being equals to 0. If we take a common factor of 6, we're going to get 7 r squared minus 12 r plus 5 being equals to zero so now we can go ahead and factorize well factorizing this is extremely difficult so it is better if you use the quadratic formula but anyway we're gonna have 7r minus 5 multiplied by r minus 1 so r is equals to 5 divided by 7 or r is equals to 1 well r cannot be equals to 1 if our series is converging. That is the value of R. Now we can find the value of A. 
we know that a is equals to 6 minus 6r. So we're going to have 6 minus 6 multiplied by 5 divided by 7. So the value of a is 12 divided by 7. Let's go ahead and do 3.1.3. Write down T6 of the series of squares. Under normal circumstances, T6 is equal to AR to the power of 5. But we want T6 of the series of squares. So T6 of the series of squares will be equal to AR to the power 5 squared. So we have A to the power 2, R to the power 10, 5 multiplied by 2. So what is A? A is 12 divided by 7. We square that and we multiply by R. What is R? R is 5 divided by 7 to the power 10. This is equals to 0 0.1. Let's look at this. Let's look at the last question, 3.2. We're not going to waste a lot of time here. There are 50 liters of water in a container. Water evaporates from this container at the rate of 1% per hour under certain weather conditions. How much water will be left in the container after 8 hours if left under these weather conditions? So the amount of water that is going to be left after 8 hours will be equal to 50 multiplied by 99% to the power of 8, which is equal to 46 0.14. In an hour, we are left with 99% of the water because it is evaporating at a rate of 1% in an hour. But we have 8 hours, hence that 8 is up there. We are left with 46.14 liters of water.